What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the new B-Link SER5 Pro. Now this is a powerful mini PC priced at around 250 depending on where you buy it from. And for that low price, you are getting an AMD Ryzen 7 5800 octa-core performance clocked at 3.2 gigahertz with a 4.4 gigahertz turbo. This also has 16 gigs of dual channel RAM and an internal 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD drive. There are options to upgrade the RAM and storage and also to add an additional two and a half inch SATA drive. And you also have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, gigabit LAN, and this is running Windows 11 Professional. I expect this mini PC will give you a great all-round performance no matter what you decide to do on it, from office applications to gaming to editing work. So on paper, this one should manage everything you throw at it quite easily. Nevertheless, I can't wait to put this thing to the test. First of all, inside the box, you will find the user manual. We've got a metal VESA mount with screws so you can mount the mini PC to the back of your monitor. We've got a small HDMI cable and a long HDMI cable, a power cable, a power supply, and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. So it looks like this is a 64 watt power supply and it's quite compact in size. Now, last but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. So here it is, guys, the B Link Sur 5 Pro. You can see you've got the AMD Ryzen 7 stickers. It says they're B-Link and AMD. On the front, you've got the clear CMOS hole. You've got two USB 3 ports and you've got a Type-C port and a headphone and microphone combo jack with physical power button. On the side, you've got nothing. On the back, we've got a gigabit LAN, another USB 3 port, a USB 2 port. We've got two HDMI 2.1 ports and you've got a power socket. If we keep going, nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front and here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. And it also shows you how you can access the BIOS and the boot options. So you're pressing either delete or F7. Nice and straightforward. Now this mini PC is made from a combination of plastic and metal. So we've got metal mesh grill on top and the sides. The body in between is made from plastic and the bottom is actually made from metal. So premium build quality, this mini PC certainly looks the business. Now without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and we are gonna find out exactly how good the B-Link SER5 Pro really is. I'll be right back. All right, so we're just gonna quickly check out the internals. So there are four screws to open, one, two, three, and four. Let's get them open, shall we? You've got a silicone tab here, which will help you remove the back cover. There we go, covers off. So the first thing you're gonna see is your cooling fan. And you've got your SATA connection here so you can install your SATA hard drive. And to access the RAM and storage, you need to remove this fan plate. So you've got one, two, and three screws in the corner. So here we go. So three screws have been removed, so we should be able to lift off this fan cover. But be careful as there is gonna be two cables attached. You've got a ribbon cable on this side and just underneath, you're gonna see the fan cable as well. So if I just slightly lift this cover off, I'm not gonna remove the cables because I just wanna give you guys a quick look at the internals. So you can see the RAM configuration. We've got two sticks of eight gigabytes DDR4 dual channel RAM pre-installed. Maximum supported RAM is 32 gigabytes per slot. So you can upgrade this to 64 gigs max. The M.2 SSD on this side is 500 gigabytes. You can swap this out for a drive up to two terabytes, but then you would have to reinstall Windows yourself. So that is pretty much your upgrade options for RAM and storage. Now let's get this lid back on. And I forgot to mention the SATA hard drive supports up to two terabytes. Okay, so now it's time to check this thing out. Starting off with a quick boot up speed test in which this mini PC took 39 seconds to boot up from a cold start. Also a quick look at the BIOS page, which you can access by pressing delete button when restarting this PC. And as you can see, there are lots of configuration settings and options that you can tweak or enable, including secure boot, which is required to play EA games like FIFA 23. So that was just a very quick look at the BIOS page. So this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional and I am connected to my 4K capture card. So my desktop resolution is currently set to 3840 by 2160. Now let's check out the system properties. So as you can see, it's running Windows 11 Professional with the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H with the Radeon graphics clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. You can see 16 gigs of RAM and 12.9 gigs usable. It's 64-bit OS and it's already activated and ready to use. 
Now, system storage info, we have 500 gigs of internal storage from which 463 gigs are usable. And from that, we have 433 gigs free to use. And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which we're going to test right now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the default media player. Now, first video is the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo. That's 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing super smooth with no issues. Next, I tested the 180 megabits per second video and that also played quite well. And finally, the real test, 400 megabits per second, high bitrate jellyfish sample. And as you guys can see, this sample is also playing very well. So high bitrate 4K playing fine from USB. Now let's go ahead and test some 4K 60 HDR samples. So this mini PC is capable of playing back a wide range of different 4K file types, including HDR formats. Incredibly smooth with no buffering or stuttering issues. Okay, so time to move on to some video streaming on YouTube. And yes, this does support 4K60 with HDR and the streaming quality and performance is top notch with no issues. So let's just play a whole bunch of trailers. Shot. even have these eh, who knows i'm preparing <laughs> is that a timex no it's a move that's the median nerve that i'm compressing so next up i loaded up netflix and i can confirm that netflix does support a maximum of 1080p streaming and you can expect exactly the same from amazon prime video 1080p streaming max Let's move on to some gaming, starting off with GTA 5. Here are the graphics settings. So resolution 1080p, VSync is off and the graphics are set overall to very high. And as you can see, we're achieving around 39 frames per second average with the TDP going up to around 35 watts. The Intel graphics are certainly being pushed hard at 99% and the CPU temperatures do not exceed 86 degrees Celsius even after extended sessions of GTA 5. So no doubt you can drop down the graphics for a better frame rate but with GTA 5 nearly maxed out this is not a bad performance considering this is an Intel graphics chip. Now let's try a more recent title. So next game I'm testing is FIFA 23. Display resolution is 1080p. I've got dynamic resolution and strand based hair on and rendering quality is set to high. Now you can see the gameplay is okay at around 40 frames per second, but the cutscenes are very slow at five frames per second. The cutscenes are literally slow motion. So again, you could drop the resolution down to improve that frame rate and make the game overall play much better. Next game I want to test is WWE 2K23 and this game is no doubt quite graphically intense so you need a pretty good system to be able to play this game smooth. You can see resolution set to 1080p, 60Hz, texture quality set to standard and everything else is set to medium. And as you can see the game is actually playable at around 40 frames per second with the TDP peaking at around 22 watts. But as you can see the game feels a little bit slower um, than it should actually be. So just to see what happens, I switch shadows and shader to low. I switched off depth for field and motion blur. And now the game plays a lot faster at 60 FPS. Still looks okay, doesn't look great, um, but the game is a lot more playable. Looking at this matchup here, Corey. What do you think John Cena needs to do to find a way to win? I think Cena. Okay, one more for good luck. Call of Duty Cold War. Graphic settings 1080p, textures set to low. I'm not going to wait for the shaders to compile. I'm just going to go straight into a multiplayer game. And you can see the game is quite playable, although the graphics are a bit on the grainy side. Um, nevertheless, we're achieving around 60 frames per second. The game is certainly playable like this. So after playing a whole bunch of Steam PC games, this should already have given you a pretty good idea on the gaming performance of this mini PC. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1970 and multi core score of 7815. And in the anti to benchmark test, we achieved a score of just over 599K. 
And finally, here is the CPU benchmark scores by pass mark. And you can see this mini PC achieves a pass mark score of 25K. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to see which mini PCs perform the best and also lets you compare the specs, features and the prices. Now all the mini PCs on this chart are ranked by overall benchmark results. Now I've also added extra categories for clock speeds, base and turbo and also maximum TDP. So as you guys can see, the B-Link Sur 5 Pro has achieved position four on this chart. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the B-Link Sur 5 Pro. And I'm actually quite surprised by the performance of this mini PC, considering it's on sale right now for only 227 pounds. You're getting pretty impressive bang for your buck right here. This mini PC ranks number four on my chart. For that price, it's actually unheard of. A great all round mini PC, very nice build and design, offering power, connectivity, and even some upgrade options too. This mini PC will handle more or less anything you throw at it, from general office applications, web browsing, playing AAA PC games, 4K video editing, desktop publishing, AutoCAD, graphic design, and so on and so forth. There is no Thunderbolt 4, but at least there is a USB 3.2 Type-C port on the front, and you've got two USB-A ports next to it. So certainly nice to have some sort of connectivity on the front. Great space saving form factor. This review video pretty much sums up what you can do with this mini PC and what it can handle. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. And with all that being said, I will leave the links in the description box in case you want to check this product out. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.